Hello, welcome back. We we'll continue to review the textbook construction materials, methods, and techniques building for a sustainable future. This video is about chapter 15, and that is the first chapter from part four, and that's metals, wood, and plastics. So uh, in this chapter, chapter 15, we will learn about ferrous metals. So um, what we actually are going to take a look at is the processes for mining and processing iron ore and for producing uh, pig iron and steel. Also, we'll uh, learn about the properties of ferrous metals to consider when making material selection decisions. And we'll get familiar with the various steel identification systems and the United Numbering Systems for metals and alloys. So uh, let's actually uh, see what the ferrous metals are. So those are the metals in which the chief ingredient is the chemical element iron or ferrum. In iron, um, uh, the chemical uh, system is Fe uh, from the Mendeleev uh, periodic table. Um, iron is mixed with other minerals and um, is found in large quantities in the earth crust. So when we talk about um, iron for commercial purposes, iron must have alloying elements added to improve its characteristics and please read more about the process of mining and processing iron ore it's quite complex and it takes a lot of resources and time so um to produce iron ore um excuse me iron from iron ore uh first you use smelting that's the process in which the ore is heated uh, then you do the reduction, and that's the process um, that separates the iron from oxygen with which it is chemically mixed. Then the blast furnace is used. Uh, also the flux, that's the mineral added in um, to molten ore in a blast furnace. And the flux combines with impurities and forms a slag that floats on top of the molten material. So uh, there is a beautiful section showing the blast furnace and how that works. And you can see the temperature and you can see the uh, different components of that. So if you're um, interested, definitely learn more about that. Also, there is a description of the cast iron. And cast iron um, has carbon contents above 1.7% and includes white, gray, and molable types. So, and molability is a property of metal that allows it to be formed mechanically by rolling or forging, for example, without fracturing. So, also, uh, if you more graphics here, so definitely review those. And uh, when we talk about the basic oxygen process, uh, that uh, has a large um, vessel lined with refractory material. Um, the oxidation produces the heat necessary to melt the charge. Uh, and also um, when there is the electric steel making process. It is um, a um, process where electric furnaces use arc radiation and electric resistance to current flow to produce the required high temperature. Again, please uh, review all the uh, images here. You can see the electric arc furnace, you can see the induction furnace, and you can see how the steel is um, being cast. So when we talk about manufacturing steel products, there are a few things that we need to remember. So um, the um, steel, uh, cast steel products and uh, also the wrought products are 
uh, manufactured by Roland Extruden, Paul Drawin, Virgin, and Aston. And those items um, are referred to as cast eel products. So um, also there is um, an image showing the steps in producing ingots into a semi-finished steel used to produce finished steel products. So there are actually a lot of images here in this chapter. So I highly recommend to just go back and check that. So um, steel can be recycled and it's one of the most widely recycled materials in the world. Uh, so basically it can be uh, used once again and 60 to 98% of all steel product, products um, contain recycled content. So and the energy saved by recycling reduces the industry's annual energy consumption by about 75%. Um, so also um, architects and engineers uh, utilize recycled steel content for the projects and also consider the potential for material, excuse me, material reuse at the end of the building's useful life. And that is called uh, design for disassembly or DFD. And that is the emerging um, subfield of sustainable construction that promotes disassembly over demolition in an effort to maximize material recycling. So when we talk about steel, we need to remember about that. Also, there are um, three charts showing steel identification systems. So one of them is the numbering system uh, that is um, cross-reference to uh, UNS or Unified Numbering System. Then um, identify, uh, identification number type and yield point of selected structural steels. So please definitely refer to uh, these charts when you specify the materials. And there are a few more char charts showing the steel and steel alloys. And you can see plain carbon steels, alloy steels, you can see types of structural steel. So uh, definitely review these. Uh, they are not necessary to be memorized, but you need to understand where to find the ASTM designation. You need to find the element and the properties. And uh, those are the properties um, imparted to steel alloys by alloying elements. And you can see different variations of those. Also, a few more charts showing stainless and heat resistant steels. And here is um, another chart showing the classifying stainless uh, steel and the designations for stainless and heat resistant steels. So definitely check those out. Uh, steel products, what actually can be uh, produced with that? So it can be um, a commonly available structural steel shapes, and that's the beam, uh, that can be the standard beam, that can be the white flange beam, that can be a structural T, it can be channel, square bar, it can be plate, it can be a round bar or flat bar. So uh, definitely just uh, see the images because they show um, different types that are available on, on the market. Um, also, there are th symbols and abbreviations for structural steel members. And you can see the uh, size, you can see the sample of abbreviated note, and you can see the uh, structural shapes here. So again, um, there are other products and it can be steel bolt. It can be commonly used nails. Uh, it can be a decorative metal mesh products and also it can be a rebar. It can be a, um, welded wire reinforcement and so on. So uh, definitely check this out. And actually this wraps up our chapter 15. So in the next chapter, chapter 16, we will review the non-ferrous 
method. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in chapter 16.